everyone, Kate here for a very exciting video, and that is my Middle Grade March TBR. So Middle Grade March is a readathon that is hosted by Katie from Life Between Words and Krista from Books and Jams, and it is just a wonderful month-long readathon of middle grade literature, and middle grade literature being books written for audiences aged 8 to 12 years old. But that does not mean that once you surpass that age that there, <laughs> there are not any merits from those books. And it's just some of my absolute most favorite books are middle grade books. And I did participate in Middle Grade March last year, but not documented on my booktube channel. So this year I'm hopefully going to document it better. I'm hoping to do a video on my favorite middle grade books and hopefully vlogging. We'll see how it works out. But I can guarantee you this TBR video today and a wrap up at the end of the month for sure. And I have so many middle grade books that I want to read, but I found now from um, Victober and other readathons that I take place in, just to tell you about the books that I have picked for the challenges with maybe a couple extra mentioned, but not the whole list because I mean, I have so many I'm interested in, all of those, and it would just be overwhelming to list them all. So there are challenges that are totally optional and a group read that is also optional, but I loved the sound of all of them. So I will be participating in all of them. And the first challenge is a mystery. So I have several books that I'm interested in. And the uh, mystery challenge, it can be kind of up to interpretation. I mean, the Harry Potter books all have some aspect of mystery in them. And the first one that I am hoping to read for this challenge is The Incorrigible Sisters of Prick Willow Place by Julie Berry. This is a Victorian era historical fiction about these. Uh, there is a murder at this all girls finishing school. And I think they solved the murder. I don't want to be spoiled though. So I haven't looked into it much more than that. I was supposed to read this in August. I had it checked out and then just didn't get around to it. So I'm hoping to finally pick it up because it just sounds like a really wonderful read. And then I want to read The Wolves of Willoughby Chase. This is a sort of classic, I would say, by Joan Aiken. And um, I have access to the audiobook and actually earlier sampled it. And I love the woman's voice who does the audiobook narration. Again, I don't know much about this one either, but I really, with mysteries, you know, you don't want to be spoiled. Um, and then the last one that I want to read is Withering by Sea by Judith Russell. What I love about this book is that it is in blue. All the illustrations are in blue. All of the font is in blue. And then there's a sequel that I was looking at at the library and all of the font and illustrations are in an emerald green, which I think is such a nice little detail to add to it. But in Withering by Sea, it's uh, about, what is her name? Oh, the orphan Stella Montgomery. So if she's an orphan, you know, you're going to kind of have lots of empathy for her immediately. And it says she lives a miserable life with her three dreadful aunts and she dreams of adventures. Um, and then she sees something one night that she shouldn't have and then she has to be on the run. Uh, so it just sounds like a really fun, uh, mysterious middle grade. And it is... Uh, 250 pages. That's the nice thing about Middle Grade March too, is you really build a lot of momentum when you're reading children's literature. And although I wouldn't want to exclusively read children's literature throughout the year, I just find it really fun to just go all out in March. And with a couple exceptions, I'll just be reading Middle Grade. Then the next challenge is to read um, a book set in another country. And I'm going to be reading The Jumbies. And I'm pretty sure the country is set in is Jamaica, or it could be, I think it's Jamaica where it's set, but it takes this, or maybe Haiti, I'll put the country below the image of the book, but um, it takes Haitian folklore, I think it is Haiti, it takes Haitian folklore and um, kind of runs with it, and it just sounds really cool and mysterious, and yes, definitely want to read The Jumbies. And the next challenge is read a book with illustrations. So this is a really really easy one for middle grade because there are so many books that include illustrations and I do love reading books that include illustrations because it's just so lovely to have these pictures waiting for you there. Um, and the so I picked several books for this. First is Henry and the Chalk Dragon and it's about a little boy who draws this dragon with chalk and then the dragon comes to life. It sounds really fun. It's supposed to have some great illustrations. Uh, then I want to read... Um, 
The Secret Garden, which by now you will have seen um, my announcement video for a read along that I'm posting of this because I thought maybe there would be some interest um, in reading this together. And I'll just show you one of the illustrations. There's Mary talking to Colin. And uh, yes, I just really am looking forward to revisiting this book. And then I picked up several graphic novels. The first is Stargazing by Jen Wang. This won um, one of the American Library Association's award for Asian literature, I think was the award that's specifically given to it. But it's just uh, about two Chinese American students and their experience in school. And uh, it looks like there's a lot to do with stargazing in it, which will be really cool. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. And then the Newberry winner for this year, which I promptly put on hold, is called New Kid. And it is by Jerry Craft. And it is about a kid in a school where he looks very different from a lot of the other kids. It says he's one of the few kids of color in his entire grade. And he has to make a daily trip from far away. But I love the look of the art in this. And um, yeah, graphic novels can just be so fun. Uh, and then uh, another Newberry winner was it Newberry winner, Newberry honor. So not the winner, but one of the ones that got like the honor is El Defo by CC Bell. And this is about a deaf or a hearing impaired child's experience going to school and kind of the ways that they feel different and maybe the special equipment they have to bring with them and all of that. And it just sounds really marvelous and a neat way to look at uh, somebody else's experience. And then a book, the next challenge is a book about books or stories and another Newbery book. This one, the Newbery Honor um, this year is the Scary Stories for Young Foxes. And so it's a series of short stories. And so I thought that was perfect for the challenge of a book about books or stories. Um, then a book to screen adaptation. So there's so many possibilities for that, but the couple that I have picked for it, the first one, I found this in pristine condition at the library, the 50th anniversary of Lassie, Lassie Come Home um, by Eric Knight. And I thought it just sounded, it was so intriguing to me. It had never occurred to me that there would have been a book for Lassie, but also the illustrations look so beautiful. Um, so I think maybe depending on how it goes, it could be neat to read this aloud with Peter. Um, and then the other one that I thought could be really cool for the challenge and then to watch the movie, read it with Peter, then maybe watch the movie with him is Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. And this won the Newbery Medal in 1971, I think it is. Also, I have to show you these illustrations, really simple pen and ink. I really like, um, but it's about this widowed mouse and kind of this, I think she, her, basically her big quest or adventure that she goes on. And there are big rats involved. There is a big owl, a wise owl. And then there's a laboratory known as Nim. And the movie is called The Secrets of Nim, I think is the name of it. So I really am looking forward to this because I just on and off again, keep hearing about this book and I really want to read it. Um, okay, then let's see. The group read is The Book of Boy, which I was already really wanting to read. It's a med medieval adventure story, and it just has sounded really, really marvelous. So I will be picking that up from the library. And then a couple odds and ends I just thought I'd show you. I, again, so many, many that I want to read, but I thought I'd just document just a few more on here. And the first is a book that Katie from Life Between Words recommended and one of her middle grade recommendations videos from a couple years ago and that is Moon Over Manifest and this is a Newbery winner. Can you sense a theme here? Uh, but you know I really I find myself with middle grade maybe to be the most picky because since it is children's literature maybe a more uh, average children's book it's going to be harder to please me than kind of an average mystery I'll, I'll be more happy with. So I am being very selective, even though I have so many on my list. But Mood Over Manifest um, is about this little girl who goes to stay with, who does she stay with for a summer? Abilene, which is such a great name, Abilene Tucker. Uh, oh, yes. Her father has put her on a train, sending her off to live with an old friend for the summer while he works on a railroad job. Uh, so I definitely look forward to this if it's a recommendation by Katie. 
And I might do the audiobook of this. I'm not sure because I have put so many middle grade audiobooks on hold. We'll see which ones um, I end up listening to. Then a classic I want to read is Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm by Kate Douglas Wiggin. I've put off reading this because I do fear it's one of those ones that if you read as an adult for the first time, you won't enjoy it as much. But I want to give it a try. That's all I can do is give it a try. And, you know, Caddy Woodlawn became a new favorite. So there are those magical books like Caddy Woodlawn in the Secret Garden that you read for the first time as an adult and you still love. Uh, so, yes, it's just about... Rebecca and she, let's see, she's going off to live with her aunts, Miranda and Jane in Riverboro. Um, and she, her mother is a widow and has many other children. So she goes to live with her aunts. And then another book I will be reading is Eight Cousins by Louisa May Alcott. So fun that the year of Louisa May can kind of sync up with middle grade March in the month of March. And Eight Cousins or Aunt Hill, aunt being A-U-N-T. So it'll be interesting to kind of parallel Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm with um, Eight Cousins. Totally lost my train of thought there. So I'm really looking forward to Eight Cousins because I've heard such marvelous things. And then one of you lovely subscribers, and I cannot remember what video it was on, but you left a comment recommending this blog called What We Do All Day. And thank you if you are watching to whoever recommended that because I have just gone down the rabbit hole. The person who recommends books on here, I cannot believe how many children's books they have read. And so this book was published in 1981. Um, and it's by Elizabeth Winthrop. And it's The Castle in the Attic. And it's about a little boy who has a nanny. And she leaves. And he is devastated because they're very close. But she leaves him this castle. And it is not, everything is not as it seems with this toy castle. So it just sounded really special. And the person who writes on this blog, What We Do All Day, like sounds very choosy in particular with the books that they pick. But this just sounded really, really wonderful. And so I'm really hopeful about all the recommendations that they have given. I think I will cut it off there. And if I read other books, you will be hearing about them. I'm really so excited for this. Just as Victober has now made me automatically crave Victorian literature in autumn, Middle Grade March has now made me automatically crave middle grade fiction in the springtime. Thank you for watching and I'll be back for another video soon. Bye.